Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this project starts off with a big pile of old wood. Recently my mom had her fence replaced and thought I could use some of these old fence boards to make some signs out of. And that's exactly what I intend to do. I got a whole pile of them out there. I'm going to have to come up with all kinds of ideas. I'm going to start with one that I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, just recreate an old railroad crossing sign. As you can see, these things are pretty rough. Obviously, just old fence boards, nothing, nothing too fancy. Don't forget, if you haven't, head on down, like, and subscribe to the channel to follow along with a lot of different painting projects that I do, as well as all my other vehicle projects. As you can see, these boards are in pretty rough shape. For what I do, that's about perfect. Uh, some storm damage to them. This one actually got broken, but I got a whole pile of them out there, so I got to come up with some ideas of something to do with them. So a lot of times I'll get these old boards either given to me or I'll find them. They're going to have nails in them. They'll have some splits in them. So that's all stuff I like to work around and uh, incorporate into the signs that I make. Uh, it gives them all character. It makes each piece a little bit different. And that's part of what makes it fun. So I'm going to start by getting some of these screws and nails out of here and uh, start cutting these up. Sometimes you can leave the heads of these in here like it's an old, like it was hung up years ago. I don't mind that at all. It gives it that little bit extra character. So it may sound weird to some of you, some of you may completely understand, but a lot of times when I get these old boards, I kind of let them tell me what they want to be. Um, you'll realize over enough time that you'll get a piece of, piece of wood, be it an old board like this, a big square chunk, whatever it may be, that you'll realize that it kind of fits an idea that you may have had or something that you may have seen that you liked. In this instance, these are big, long, fairly wide boards and I've been wanting to make a kind of an old style railroad crossing sign for a while. So I'm going to cut them pretty long and uh, I'm going to leave the width alone. Like I said, I'm going to leave some of these old nails and screw heads in here and all the checks and everything and go from there. But first, I gotta get them cut up. Hey, right, again, like I said, similar treatment to last time. Um, I'm definitely not gonna go as thick, and I'm not gonna go as many coats, and I do want this to kind of soak in. I want it to look like it's been weathered for a long time. So, let's get to it. If you watch my last video, you know what's coming next. Alright, so unlike a lot of signs that I'll do, uh, this one in particular, I'm going to start assembling before I actually paint it. Uh, the reason being, it makes it a lot easier to lay it out since I have two lines of lettering that are crossing each other. It uh, just visually it helps me understand where I need to be versus trying to mark this board out and then paint it and then paint the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this thing together. All right, there we go. All assembled. Now I can start laying it out and start putting some paint on this thing. paintbrush, got paint loaded up, got it all mixed, ready to go, so let's dive into it. Now 
Now, something you may be noticing, I don't know if you can see it quite from there, but this board is so rough that I'm not getting very good coverage on my paint. Uh, I'm okay with that, I'm gonna let it go. I'll bring you in for a little bit closer look. So as you can see, I'm missing a lot of these spots in here, and that's because of how the wood is worn over the years. Now, the reason I'm okay with that is because that's how the wood has worn over the years. Uh, as I go back and sand it, I'm going to be sanding only on the high spots, so I am going to take a little more paint off, but this paint that's here would have naturally, naturally worn away just like the wood has. Right, this one's a little bit different since this is the type of sign that would have spent its entire life standing up on a signpost. I'm going to think about that when I'm weathering it. Um, you want to start from the top and work your way down. The bottom side isn't going to be near as weathered as the top side. You're going to have all the elements and everything always hitting the top typically when it's hanging up. So I'm going to keep that in mind here. And of course, what would be one of these signs without a few hammer dings, some claw marks, uh, just beating it up in general. So I'm really going to focus, like I said before, on these leading edges that would have been up at the top of the sign when it was standing. Uh, so somewhere along here where over the years a lot of rain, snow, everything would have accumulated, uh, beat up in there. It's all stuff to keep in mind when you're doing these. Okay, I think that one's about done. Maybe one last step. All right, just for good measure, might as well uh, hit it with the one grit. If you guys made it this far, make sure you go down, like the video, also make sure you're subscribed to the channel to follow along for any of my signs that I make, 
or any of my other projects that I have going, uh, you can find links. I'll try and put them somewhere in here. Uh, next time you see a pile of old boards laying around, don't think of them as just garbage or stuff for the burn pile. Think of what you can do with them. So that'll do it for this video. I appreciate you hanging in there, watching the whole thing, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.